obstacle to change for addicts who are incarcerated is hopelessness. We must, as a community, do all that we can to begin to instill hope in those that have been separated from us and who have gone to do time inside of our nation's prisons. Having a direct path to connectedness is what I believe is absolutely necessary in order for those who are incarcerated, who have issues with addiction, to be restored to society whole again. It has been an absolute joy on my behalf to be able to touch lives like Brother Clay had introduced me today because coming into the system with the kind of issues that we began with and looking at him today, it just blesses my heart. At 17 years old, I left home to attend North Carolina State A&T University with a major in electrical engineering. Although it didn't take long for that major to become the triple major of binge drinking, <laughs> chasing girls, and partying, though probably not in that order. I had to take the long, hard, roundabout way in my life to get back to the moral foundations that were set for me uh, by my parents. My father, the United Methodist minister, my mother, an educator, and social worker. Both of them did everything in their power to keep me on the right track. Nevertheless, I know we've all heard the statement, experience is the best teacher. Well, uh, if you're becoming a welder, that would be true. <laughs> if you're becoming uh, an auto mechanic, that would be true. But when it comes to the wisdom of life, experience is not always the best teacher. I had to take the long, roundabout way in my life in order to get to this point of understanding that the wisdom of the elders in our society is priceless. I want us to take a look at the problem that I want to describe with incarceration of our nation's addicts. The U.S. is ranked number one in the world in terms of percentage of citizens incarcerated. There are roughly 60,000 people incarcerated just in the state of Georgia. 70% of those incarcerated in Georgia, or 42,000 people, have substance abuse issues. Only one in nine receive substance abuse treatment while they're incarcerated in the Department of Corrections. And there are just 800 beds available in the only residential substance abuse treatment program available in the Department of Corrections. 20,000 people are released from Georgia prisons each year. We are referred to as returning citizens. Now, doesn't that sound a lot better than ex-offender, <laughs> ex-felon? And if 70%, that's 14,000 people per year, of all returning citizens in Georgia are released from prison with a substance abuse issue why are we perplexed at the high rate of recidivism? I want to talk to you about three strategies that I believe are necessary in order to give our nation's returning citizens permission to dream again. Number one, I believe we need to reform the rehabilitation process in our nation's prisons. I want to talk to you just about a couple of terms. Rehabilitation has two components. Reentry, that which takes place on the inside of the prison before we're released, and reintegration, that which takes place 
when returning citizens are reintegrated into society. Number one, we need to reform the reentry process. Does it make sense to you that a person that goes into the Department of Corrections with a substance abuse issue to do their entire time in prison and be released and yet have no programming to deal with the primary issue that caused them to be housed in prison in the first place. Does that make sense to you no. as taxpayers? Mm -hmm. Secondly, I believe we need to incentivize abuse treatment. We've all heard that addicts do what they do because that's the choice that they make. And I want to ask you, how many of you would choose to work a 75-hour-a-week job only to receive your paycheck on a Friday and not have enough money to buy a Coca-Cola on Saturday morning? Mm -hmm. Who would make the choice willingly, week in and week out, to live in such a manner? Substance abuse and addiction is just much more to it than that. I believe that in order for our nations incarcerated, those who have substance abuse issues, to seek out the treatment that we know they so desperately need, I believe that it needs to be incentivized. And I'm going to explain to you what, what I mean by that. A person who has an addiction, with, uh, has an issue of substance abuse, that commits a crime to help pay for their drug habit. And let's say they're sentenced to 10 years in prison. At $25,000 a year of your taxpayer money, with no programs to foster successful reentry, that only equals a high rate of recidivism, prison overcrowding, and higher taxes. I believe that that individual should have the choice or the option of being sentenced to half the amount of time, five years in prison, and let us invest the same $250,000. We're going to invest $125,000 for housing, but $125,000 will be directed towards substance abuse programming education, and being able to leave the system with a trade that they might be gainfully employed once released. Thirdly, I was introduced to a concept in 2003 that changed my whole entire life. And that concept is known as rewiring the brain. I don't know if you've all ever heard of that before. <laughs> because I hadn't to that point. And I was taught, or I have learned, that rewiring the brain requires three primary elements. Number one, a healthy environment. Number two, positive thought processes. And number three, repetition. What better place can a person's environment be controlled than inside of the fence of our nation's prison? So if we have the environment down pat, what we need is the programming while we are incarcerated to help us to rewire our brains. Rewiring the brain, giving the opportunity not only to be free from negative thoughts, but we have to reprogram the brain with positive thoughts, thoughts of hope, thoughts of healing, thoughts of opportunity, thoughts of purpose, and thoughts of expectation. I came into the system in 1998 with 20 years to serve. And there are people who think I'm absolutely 
a little bonkers for wanting to leave prison and continue to work with returning citizens. Well, let me tell you this. With 15 years of experience as a chaplain's assistant, I've met numerous returning citizens who do not have the support network necessary to successfully reintegrate society. I personally am tremendously blessed. Uh, today I have my beautiful wife here with me to support me still uh, after 30 years of marriage. Uh, my brother, my parents, my immediate family, extended family, mentors, you name it. There's a team uh, keeping me in check, and I thank God for that. But for a majority of returning citizens, they do not have such a network of support upon re-entry. And my hope, my desire, is simply to play a small role in assisting them in their successful reintegration into society. Positive connections is the key to <clears throat> unlocking the doors of bondage for those who are addicted. Connections like restorative justice. Rather than sitting in prison and doing time, that's what we call it, uh, restorative justice calls for the offender to make amends with the person that they have wronged. If they stole something, you have to pay it back. There's even a program that allows for, it's called victim impact, that allows for the victim of the crime and the offender of the crime to come together and make reconciliation when both parties agree. We need to have addiction treatment for the entirety of the time that a person is incarcerated. If we spend five years in prison in an intensive drug rehabilitation program, I'm certain that would increase the success rate of those who are exiting our nation's prisons. Faith and character-based dormitories and re-entry dorm programs form the environments to allow us to make the connections necessary to begin living a life of sobriety with a group of our peers to support us, that we might support one another to be successful once we are released. We're also in need of greater attention to being prepared for employment when it comes time for release. In our country, there was a great shortage of welders today. Every time you see a job ad, there's someone needing truck drivers to drive the, eight, the big 18-wheelers, right? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine a prison system that will allow for men to leave with certified driver's licenses to fill those jobs, that would leave certified as auto mechanics to fill the voids in that area of our 21st century economy? And education. As a former student of Jacksonville Theological Seminary and New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, I am confident that education goes a long way in the process of rewiring the brain. Each one of us here this morning, our lives have been touched by someone who either was an addict has been incarcerated, and sometimes both. Today is July 28th. <laughs> <laughs> I will be released from prison in 39 days, and I plan to activate my vision to assist returning citizens as they re-enter society. It will be an honor to have you your families, and as many people as you can contact on your Facebook page, Twitter, and all of the social media that now exists that did not even exist when I came to prison in 1998. I'm going to ask you that as we go about 
doing all that we can to help our men and women coming out of the prison to be successfully reintegrated in society, I want to ask that you will join me in this mission. Thank you.